What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Today we're gonna to be playing in an LA home game and if you're new to the channel, subscribe. It's always much appreciated and hit that like button. It always helps the channel grow a ton, but today we're trying to bounce back from the massive losing sessions we've had recently in the Hustler Casino. So uh, this home game is going to be 5-5-10, five, five, uncapped buying, so a little bit bigger than normal. So we'll try to run it up and see what happens. Going to need the run good here in this session to come back just a little bit. But before we get into the video, the next few videos will be off to Texas in San Antonio. So those videos will be fun as well, playing on live stream and a meetup game. So without further ado, let's get into the action. So we hop into this 5-5-10 five, five, home game. We have $1,500 in our stack to start it off. There's no max here here so things might get a little bit bigger later in the session but one of the very first hands we pick up seven three off suit in the big blinds we're playing five handed and we're playing a five way family limped pot so off to a flop which comes the magical seven three three starting off hot hopefully this is a good sign to come for the rest of the session with a full house action checks to the cutoff who bets out twenty dollars we have the board completely locked up so I'm the only caller, and we're off to a turn. The turn comes at 10, I check it over to him once again, and he bets out $25. On to me, we're playing heads up, out of position, certainly not big enough of a bet. We definitely wanna get stacks here in the middle. If he somehow has a three, that'd be so great for us. I put in a check raise to 125. We started with about $1,500 in our stack to start at the hand, and we wanna get it all in because this player decides to put in a three bet re-raises us to $320 total. What a dream spot to be in. So here's the thing with the situation, we are certainly able to get more money in, I think, considering that most three bets aren't really bluffs ever. And I don't think he's bluffing in this hand, so we're out of position and thinking that he's got something good, like a three that we can commit stacks now. I put in yet another raise, a re-re-re-raise to $600, essentially a min click. It's actually less than double his initial raise of 320. I think that with this bet, he can commit his stack in there relatively easily, and I don't think this is a price he can fold for. But before I can get the chips in the middle, he just folds saying he has pocket eights. So regardless, we pick up the pots. Nice start to the session so far. Hand following that with ace queen of spades. We're under the gun in the $10 straddle. We're playing five-handed. There's a cutoff open to 20. Button makes the call. The blinds fold to me and definitely gonna put in a raise with a strong hand. I size to a three bet of $100. For $100, $80 more, both of them make the call. So we've got another pot brewing. The flop comes queen, 10, deuce, rainbow. Top, top, here we go. I put in a continuation bet of $150, half the size of the pots and we only get the cutoff to make the call. He's got less than $500 in his stack, so we're hoping to play for all of it. When the river is the five of diamonds, this is a great spot, and it seems pretty easy to just put him all in effectively. So I go ahead and try to get maximum value in this spot. He thinks about it for a while, tanks it up, but sadly folds. Although we can't get max value from the first two hands, we still take down a healthy sized pots and chipping up in this session. Hand after that with pocket jacks, we're under the gun and there is a plus one straddle to 20 bucks. There's a cutoff and button player who limps to me and considering we're playing essentially 10, 20 here, out of position, I put in a raise to $125. Only one limper makes the call in the cutoff, so now we're going heads up to a flop of king four three all hearts. With the jack of hearts in hand and only one card over our pair, thinking our hand is going to be ahead here a lot of the time, I put in a small bet to start off for $80, and 80 to go, he makes the call. The turn now comes the deuce of spades. This is a total brick on this board, and I can lean either way between betting or checking, and I think sometimes we can exercise some pot control and check. So once I check, he ends up checking it back. So we're off to see a free river, which comes the 10 of clubs. Now in this instance, I don't think there's any merit to betting. So I check and now he throws out a bet of $250. We have a pretty good bluff catcher. We don't have top pair, but I think we beat all 10 X holdings or missed hearts. So I make the call. 
And sadly, he has none of those holdings we beat with king queen off suit. So as much as the profits that we made in the first two hands were there, they are gone now after this hand. We add on for an additional $1,500, so in the game for $3,000 now. And the next interesting spot that we get involved in is king queen off suit, and we're in the small blind. Action folds to the button who opens it up to 30. I'm next to act and here I three bet to $140. The big blind to my left now decides on making the call for 140, which seems pretty interesting here. And the button makes the call as well. So interesting developments going on pre-flop. Let's see a good flop and it comes king five, six, two diamonds. Top pair, good kicker. Definitely gonna fire out another bet into the field out of position. I bet out 150. The big blind gets out of the way, but the button comes along. Heading to a turn, which is now the nine of clubs. Not a card we love seeing. It brings two flush rods on the board now and eight, seven as a straight gots there. On a card that doesn't really hit us too often, I start off with a check now on this turn and this button player bets out a really small amount of 170. Didn't really expect such a small sizing, but with top pair and a good kicker right now, we're gonna have to hold on and make the call at least and evaluate a river. When the river is the eight of hearts, pretty horrendous given all flush draws did break out, but there is a four liner on the board. I check once again, hoping he checks it back and he thinks about it for a while, but ends up checking back, which is nice, showing us king jack of spades and king queen with the queen kicker is going to take it down, winning another one. This following hand is a really fun, interesting one as we play a seven way, $25 double board bomb pot PLO style. We pick up king king eight three, and on flop number one, we flop trips in eight eight nine, flop number two in ace three five, not a whole lot going on there. We're on the button, action checks to me, and with trips on the top board, one pair of kings on flop number two, I just bet out $105 just to see what develops. For $105, we get two of the six other players to make the call. And we're off to two turns. Turn number one is a brick, and turn number two comes a king. Oh boy. Trips on top, and now we have a set of kings on the bottom. Action checks to me, and I'm going to fire out another bet, thinking that we can't lose on both boards. I bet out 300 and one player makes the call. And we're off to see a river with a really big pot developing. The river comes and they don't change the board too much. So now he checks to me and we're heads up. I think we can decide to either check this one back or somehow bet and blast away into this for max value. Anyways, I ended up just checking it back. I don't think it's too necessary to blow up the pot without having the nuts on either board. So we check it back. This player shows us king eight for trips and king kicker on the top board. So I think we're gonna chop this one up and he has nothing on the second board. So we scoop the second pot. The other player gets quartered and we actually win 75% of the pot. No, same. Oh, yeah, so he's, he's, he's got a hand. And he has a set of kings, so it's a quarter pot. Yeah, quarter, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot that. We win a good chunk of change on that double board PLO bomb pot. And in this hand, king queen offsuit once again, we're in the cutoff and there's a $20 straddle. I decided to open things up to 60. The small one makes the call, the only gun straddler makes the call and we're going three ways to a flop. Flop is pretty darn good for us in king queen three, two diamonds. With top two pair, we're in position. I bet out $150 when action checks to me. Sizing up here, hoping to get a lot of money in the middle and later streets. Only the small blind player makes the call. Let's go to a turn, which comes the four of diamonds. He checks to me here, and with the diamonds completing, I think we can go either way with a check or bet, and I'm gonna lean more towards a check in this spot. We have one of our stronger hands in range that we can check back, so I um, gotta go and balance that a little bit. Off to a river now, which is the 10 of spades, so it doesn't really change a whole lot. He checks for a third time and definitely time to go for some value. I bet out $250, hoping either a king or a queen can be in here. And for 250, he thinks about it and ends up calling. Show her hand and it's no good. Sadly, he had ace jack, got there with the gutter on the river and 
we're not going to scoop this one. Hoping for some better luck on the next hand with Jack-10 offsuit, we're in plus one with the $20 straddle on board. This is a fun five-way limped pot, so a bunch of limpy poos going on at this table. Flop comes pretty good for us in 986 two diamonds. With the open-ended straight draw and two over cards into the field, I bet out a relatively small amount to $40 into a $100 pot. And well, clearly just a little too small. Not a single soul folds. All five of us are still in this pot when all four players make the call. We're going to a turn still five ways, and it is the lovely five. It completes the seven that was open-ended on the flop, so four-liner on the board here, so onto me, I just check, and it ends up checking all the way around. Getting to see a free river, which is the beautiful seven of hearts. Bink City for us here. Action checks to me, and we're certainly going to go for a bet. I size up to $250. Maybe we can get some non-believers to call for a chomp. Maybe we can get some 10X holdings to also call or maybe even induce a raise somehow. Anyways, action folds around to the small blind player who has about seven to $800 in his stack. He announces all in. When action folds to me, you know we're not folding the super mega nuts. I just make the call, show my cards, and this player ends up showing us a 10. And we're gonna scoop this one. Another really big pot that's coming our direction. Looks like the river gives and takes. Happy to take this time. In the following dicey spot, as you can see, there's a lot of action in this game. Ace queen of diamonds and plus one, and the $20 straddle, and action folds to the button who opens it up to 70. Small blind makes the call. We've got a beautiful premium to look at, and I'm definitely gonna size up for a three bet. Out of position against the button player, I size to $350, relatively large sizing, and when it's back onto the button player, he thinks about it for a while, and ultimately ends up, he thinks that ripping his entire stack in there is the right move. Small blind thinks and ends up folding. We're not loving this spot at all, but, we get a count of his stack and it's $750 total. Considering we committed so much, we can't possibly fold for $400 more. So I'm not loving this spot, but got a call. We're off to a run out with ace queen high. Okay, oh, oh, oh my God. Oh fuck, I have ace jack. Oh no. Oh wow. King. Renault comes, queen on the flop, looks pretty good and promising for us, and ultimately we end up scooping this one as we show our ace queen versus ace jack. So pretty nice to get lucky to have one of those hands that we beat, and it holds on the runout. After scooping with ace queen, we get dealt ace queen once again. We're under the gun, and there is a $20 straddle. There are two limpers, and onto the small blind, who seems pretty solid. He raises it up to $100. Big blind folds and onto me. We have a pretty good hand, certainly going to put in a three bet, and we size to 300. The limpy poos get out of the way, and action folds to him. And with this $300 three bets, it's not enough. He wants to put more money in there, and four bets to $800. We're sitting super deep. This player has about 2,200 or more behind, and I cover him. So for $500 more, we're in position with a good hand. Let's go and see a flop. I make the call and the flop comes ace, jack, four, two hearts, top pair and good kicker. Pretty good spot for us. And when he throws out a continuation bet of 550, this might become a really large hand and sometimes he can have ace king, which would really suck, but we're not folding just yet. I make the call for 550. We're off to a turn, which is the ace of diamonds. Now we are certainly never folding or going anywhere at this point. But now he starts with a check on this turn. So with about $1,700 effective behind in stack and given the dynamics at the table so far, I think a check or all in seems to be a fine play. It's probably unlikely that this player has a flush draw given it's a three bet pot. So here I decided to rip it all in as a jam. He unfortunately folds rather quickly, later telling us he had pocket kings. 
And I think in hindsight, looking back, a check probably makes the most sense as it's unlikely to have a bluff here on this turn. But as played, I'm not one to complain when we get pushed a bunch of chips our way. For one of the last interesting hands to wrap up the night, we pick up pocket aces, pointies on the button, and there's a $40 straddle on board too. So clearly this game has gotten pretty big. I open things up on the button to $125 and immediately player in the small blind puts in a three bet to 400 music to our ears right now. What's even better, the big blind has a $110 stack. He rips it all in as well. Now action folds back to me. The small blind player has about $800 behind in his stack. And I think it's a pretty clear decision to just go all in given how much money he's committed. So I jam, he snaps it off and really quickly we're playing a $2,500 pot. It's aces versus kings. What a cooler, pretty much a dream spot for us. And when the run out gives us a boat, can't lose this one. Running pretty hot here in this home game. Oh, I just I think I think I can, but I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just show it on my that's, that's my son. Wrapping up the video, we luckily ran very, very hot, especially that last hand of the night where we pick up aces versus kings and, and stack another player for a good amount. Um, so we were actually in the entire game for a total of $3,000. We played for about five to six hours throughout the night, which is a relatively longer session than normal. I've been playing some longer sessions recently. You don't see like the two or three hour marks at all anymore for me. Um, but we actually ended up pretty well. We were out of the game for $7,830, which is uh, a pretty solid night for just a couple hours of work, winning just under $5,000. And when you think about it, I actually might be unstuck throughout this entire LA trip. Um, I won 14,000 the first night, lost 21,000 the second night, and won 2,000 yesterday, won 5,000 today. I'm down like a couple hundred bucks. Not that bad, I don't think. Um, anyways, thanks so much for watching to the end of this video. Let me know what you guys thought about the hands. I thought the ace queen hand um, was a little bit butchered, but let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm sure I'll get a bunch of feedback about that. But thanks so much for sticking to the end. If you haven't already, subscribe, like the video. That is always much appreciated. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.